Hello everyone, in this video we will talk about numerical variables. We've kind of started on this from the last tutorial, by now you've already known about RET, WIRE and LOGIC. They are used for signals modeling in synthesis, they can also be used as variables in simulation. And here comes a new one, literally called BIT. You may ask why another one? BIT is a slightly different, it is a two-state data type which means it can only support 0 and 1 as a bit, unlike RETCH, WIRE or LOGIC which are 4 states. That means they can support 0, 1, high impedance Z and unknown X. High impedance means there is no voltage, for example it could be disconnected and therefore there is no value which is different from a logical 0 value. Unknown value means there is a certain voltage but we cannot tell whether it is a logical 0 or a logical 1. All of these are 1 bit in width but they can be extended into multiple bits. However, for convenience, there are some predefined number data type with a certain width. For example, there are byte, short int, int, and long int, which are 8, 16, 32, and 64 bits respectively. Four states have a 32 bit version 2 called integer. Another aspect of this data type is that all of the multiple bit types are signed, where the most significant bit is treated as assigned. 0 means positive and 1 means negative. Now here's a showcase of a two-state variable and a four-state variable. When you declare a variable, it will be initialized. In general, two-state variables are initialized to zero, while four-state variables are initialized to unknown act. You can assign a four-state value to a two-state variable, but it is not recommended. In this case, after the assignment, byte is still zero even though logic is x. That's because a two-state variable cannot store x or high z. Any x or high z bit will be converted to zero. We can compare the two values by using double equals. In this case, the comparison would return true, meaning that the two values, 0 and x, are the same even though they are not. That's because double equals only compare two states values, the logic being all x is regarded as 0, and therefore is the same as the byte. If you want to compare all four states, you need to use triple equals. In this case, the comparison would return false. You can check if a variable has unknown values by using system function is unknown. The system function here will return true because the logic is x. After assigning the logic to 0, the system function will return false. Here's another example. First, we assign 255 to the logic and then we assign negative 1 to the byte. If you compare the logic and byte, it will return true. That means negative 1 is equal to 255. That's because the comparison is performed on a bit basis. As far as the simulation is concerned, both variables are 8 bits of 1s. One more example, this is a counter. It counts from 0 to 199 and prints out the number. Something is wrong about this code. Can you figure it out? Stop the video if you wish. Well, byte is 8 bits in width, but it does not range from 0 to 255 because it is a signed data type. It ranges from negative 1 to 8 to 1 to 7. This counter will count from 0 to 1 to 7 and then loop back to negative 1 to 8 and continue, and therefore it is always smaller than 200. Thus the loop will never end and the final display will never happen. One way to resolve this is to use a wider type or use the keyword unsigned. An unsigned byte value ranges from 0 to 255. Before we end this, I'd like to introduce another syntax. Look at this code, we have two unsigned bytes. If you're lazy, I mean, if you want to be very efficient, and you don't want to type the keyword unsigned so many times, you can use type def to create a shorthand. In this case, byte unsigned is shortened to ubyte, and you can now use ubyte to create the variables. Another thing to learn from this is the ability to look at code and understand its meaning. Reading code can be difficult and overwhelming, but if you can recognize a pattern, it can be fun and easy. First, naming is important. Imagine if I use ABC instead of ubyte, it would be difficult to figure out what the code means. Also, next time if you see code in this manner, although you don't understand or recognize what the code is, you should be able to tell the first part is a type and the second part is a variable. If the first part is not a recognizable syntax, it is probably a user-defined type. Now in summary, numerical variables has a few aspects, width, state, and sign. To try to understand these aspects before choosing a number data type, or you may encounter unexpected issues. Next, we'll talk about a very special number data type, enumeration. 